Oh, the UFC make. <laughs> the UFC make. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Well, I was going to ask how you're feeling about it right now, but it seems pretty evident that uh, you're on top of the world at the moment. Oh. <laughs> it's good to be home. <laughs> I love it. Talk about coming into tonight. I mean, did anything feel any different? Was there a different kind of energy, different nerves, or was it maybe more settled? What, what yeah, was it? I was, I, was, I was quite, obviously, I say scared, but, you know, everybody's scared going in there, you know. Um, uh, I got a poke in the eye early in the first couple of minutes, and I kind of wiped my eye, and I remember the ref said, cover your eye and put your hand up. And I kind of covered my eye and wiped my eye, and I thought I would get through it, but that's what kind of stifled me, and that's how he landed the uppercuts and uh, the knees, obviously. So, um, you know, I made a bit, bit of a mess of it, but, you know, it's not about how you start, it's about how you finish. That's what Michael Bisbing said to me at the end there, so <laughs> shout out to Michael Bisbing. <laughs> yeah. You took some shots along the way, as you said. I mean, I guess, how hurt were you? I mean, were there any moments that you thought, you know, uh-oh, this, this might yeah, be over? Yeah, yeah, I was... I, none of the uppercuts were, like... Uh, shockingly like hard uh, hit me a good calf kick um, and he hit me a good knee that, that's what kind of flustered me a little bit that's why I went in for the shot just to try and slow it down a little bit um, and he was rushing in you know I, when I when I seen I watched some footage of him a little while ago and I, when he starts to get his groove he starts to kind of like do this with his hands and I seen him doing that and I just got my head off a centre line and just threw my cannon and just threw it right to his chops. <laughs> Spectacular knockout. I mean, I guess at that moment, did you think, oh, I've definitely secured my deal? Or did you think, well, oh, yeah, it kind of takes some damage along the way. I hope, I hope not. Yeah, no, I definitely thought, like, I bounced his head off the canvas, you know, it looked like one of these speed balls was like, boom, you know. So um, putting somebody out like that, it's never nice, uh, but that's what I'm built for. Um, and, you know, I knew that was going to secure me my contract, uh, especially, you know, the last time I came out here, you know, I cut weight like nearly three times, you know, my opponent pulled out on the Monday after I made, made weight. Um, and then Sean said, Look, we're going to try and get you on on Saturday. So we're going to sign you to the UFC um, and we're going to uh, give you your shot. And I don't even know who I was going to fight. There was like Jim Miller was in talks, but they said that the commission couldn't allow that because obviously he's had so many fights and I've not had a, a lot, you know, but when I was in that moment, all I wanted to do was be a part of the UFC. Um, and then my manager said to me, he's like, I don't think we're getting anything, you know, get your stuff ready for going home tomorrow. So as you do, you go to in and out Burger and you eat some fries, eat some burgers. And <laughs> then I got a call the next day thinking it was going to be for my flight. And sure enough, my manager said, you know, we've got you a fight. I don't know if it was 12 days or 13 days on the Contender Series. And um, I just said, yes, no problem. And the weight cuts took took a lot out of me, um, and I didn't feel myself. I feel like it was a dream, to be honest. Like I, I don't even like come back here. Like obviously, like you kind of feels like a little bit of deja vu, obviously. But I, I wasn't right mentally, and I was right mentally tonight. Um, and obviously, the the eye poke caused me a bit of, bit of grief early on. I can actually still feel a little bit, but um, yeah. In the end, we got it done, and now part of the UFC. So happy days. Like you said, I mean, you're here now, so maybe it doesn't matter, but I'm just curious, given everything that you went through, like, do you have any regrets that you handled it that way, or is that just what a fighter should do? No, nah, no, nah, because I, I was still conscious. I was still, I still knew. I could see he, what he was doing with his arms. And no, I no, so, I mean, the whole process of, like, you know, oh, taking the fight. Man, do you reflect? Man, nah. I shouldn't have taken that second fight. That and, thing was the best thing that ever happened to me. Like, I sh can I swear here? Yeah. Shit, you're not. So, <laughs> <laughs> shit, shit, shit. Um, <laughs> so, um, no, nah, that was, like, the, the best thing that ever happened to me uh, because, like, when, imagine, like, I, I feel when I used to go into fights, I used to go kill, kill, kill mode, you know. I used to, like, get the blinkers on and go forward and try and knock them out. Uh, and that's not the way you go, and especially in MMA, because you know, there's so many ways to win and lose. And then obviously, it, it, I paid for it. You know, I got left hooked and I got knocked down. You know, so um, I had to go back and I had to think about my mindset and the way I gear up for a fight. And I was gearing myself up the same way as I fought last time in London on just a local show, and I was feeling good. And I feel that having that mindset leading into this fight got me. Like, I seen him coming forward and doing that with his hands, and I remember, and I just head off the center line, threw this cannon, and just hit him right in the chops, and that was it. Nice. That's it for me. Uh, obviously, this is just stage one of the dream, and there's many more to come, but I yeah. guess, ideally, do you know exactly what you want to do next in terms of 
but who you want to fight, when you want to fight, where you want to fight. I mean, is there an ideal scenario for you? Well, obviously, I've got uh, the medical guys just gave me a 30-day suspension, but, you know, obviously, we've just been in a war, but I'd really like to just get back in there, and, you know, now the UFC's got a problem to worry about, you know. They call me the nickname of the problem for a reason, so I'm just here to wait, work my way up the ladder and get better, go, go and learn and enjoy being a full-time MMA athlete for the UFC. <laughs> <laughs> hey Chris, um, how good did it feel to come back to the exact same building, the exact same cage that you had your dream taken away the first time? Oh, it's good. You know, it was actually it was more comforting in that in that sense because you know you've been here before, you've done it. You know, um, it's like uh, you know it's like going to a new job. You, when you first go, you're always a bit like tense and you don't want to make mistakes. You know, that's what happened the first time made a couple of mistakes and this time it was an absolute breeze. My weight cut was good, my training camp, camp was good, excuse me, sorry. And um, I was just, I just felt like I was meant to be here and I said to my coach before I walked out, I said, let's go and, let's go and get this contract this time, you know, st stop fucking about and just go and get it. <laughs> How was your, uh, your training camp at, at American Top Team? Are, are you going to go back? Yeah, 100%, yeah. Obviously, COVID played a big part of why I couldn't have got there in the past because they didn't have a visa, blah, blah, blah. So that was, I had actually trained there prior um, to previous fights. Um, and then for my Contender Series fight, I had to train in Liverpool. Um, shout out to Four Corners, uh, John Gillies there, you know. Um, but uh, I prepared there, I prepared really well. One of the best camps I've ever done. Um, and it just, because of everything that was going on, these the outside things like COVID and not being able, like we nearly didn't get on our flight because of COVID and stuff like that. It was just, it's an absolute nightmare. And I had all that added stress onto the new place, like coming coming here, you know. Um, and then obviously now that I've been here and done all it, it felt like home, you know. And I knew my way about. They were like, ah, oh, down this hallway. I was like, I know this hallway. I've been here before. <laughs> the problem. Uh, yeah. Who gave you that nickname? That was uh, my, my old manager. He gave me that num uh, nickname because um, he struggled to get me fights in the past. Obviously now I'm with Brian Butler, Sucker Punch. Suck um, big shout out to him, you know. Uh, Sucker Punch is such a, a professional organisation. Uh, and, you know, he's for the fighter. Um, and, you know, he does he does good things in the sense like he always texts me and asks me how I am. And that's a real professional. And I'm... Really happy to be a part of Sucker Punch, you know. But yeah, the the problem came from my last manager because he just couldn't get me matched. Because obviously I'm a problem. He's seen tonight, you know, especially this cannon. <laughs> and then finally, for me, uh, is a rematch with with Slava Claus something that you would like to get back? Oh, hundred percent. Yeah, you know, not not had that had that loss. You know, I can beat that guy anywhere. You know, I could, I should have, I should have wrestled him a little bit more. But you know, like. It's all hearsay, and it? it's hindsight's twenty twenty when it's there, you know. But uh, I wish him all the best, you know. He's done a, had a great run, uh, but if he wants to run it back, I doubt it. But uh, if he wants to run it back, bring it on. Congratulations. Thanks, brother. Hey, Chris, just for fun, uh, just a quick assessment. I know you're a student of the game. Tony Ferguson, Darius, uh, Charles, Isla, um, Dustin Poirier, Connor. How does it feel to be just in a just to be part of a pool full of killers and just this exciting division. I trained, I trained with Dustin a little bit. We did some grappling when I was at ATT. Um, and uh, you know what, man? It was, it was good to train with a, such a good guy. He's such a nice guy. He's like, the thing is, when I went to American Top Team, I thought I was going to be just another, another guy. You know, American Top Team made me feel like Dustin Poirier when I walked in the door. And that's massive, you know. And all the guys like Jorge Masvidal, you know, we, we did some wrestling rounds. He was giving me tips and points. You know, these guys are absolute veterans and they're giving me the time. And I feel like that's going to bring the sport on leaps and bounds. And it just shows how much I've got to learn, you know. I've, I've only been professional for four years now. I'm a student of the game. I'm always learning. And getting in with these guys day in, day out, um, I'm, just, I'm just so grateful for that, you know. And I put myself in that position, I asked, and I made sure I, I did the right camp in the right place at the right time, and this time I, I was going to get my UFC contract. That's excellent, man. Thank you for sharing that Thank great you. experience. And just because it's right around the corner, your division's crown is up for grabs, who wins it in October? I, w I would like Charles Oliver to win.
Excellent. And good luck in your career. And thank you, Chris. Thank you. All good. Thank you. Thanks, guys.